we're going to look at nine distinct ways to add numbers using Excel. This is going to explore several built-in functions, several different ways to do a simple thing so that you can see the real power of Microsoft Excel. Let's go. Now, the first way is purely like a calculator. You can just take two numbers, say equals six plus six, it's 12. Then you can come up here and say equals six plus 18, and it's 24. Manually typing in numbers just like you would with a calculator. You need to do this equal sign so that it knows it's going to do a calculation. But other than that, it's a very simple way to do addition in Excel. Now, one step further from this is using cell reference. So over here, I've got numbers in column B. And if I refer to those numbers in the same way as I added them up here, but instead by using their cell reference, this has the added advantage of being dynamic. So now if I change one of these numbers, if I change this, we'll see that our result immediately updates over here in column F. So cell reference is a little bit better version, though still sort of manual version of this first one. The sum function is a super handy one that you may have already heard of, and it simply takes a range of numbers, and you can drag through a range like I'm doing here, B3 colon B7, and it adds them up. You can also uh, separate these numbers with commas. So I could just add B3 and B7 by doing that. You can also add specific cells followed by a range. And finally, you can manually type in 1,000. You know, you can put an actual number in here. So it will just sum up any set of numbers that you give it. The sum if function is super handy. I like this one a lot because it takes that functionality of sum and then it just adds some conditional logic to it. Here's what it looks like. I've got numbers over here, as you know, in column B. In column C, I have checkboxes. Now, what are checkboxes? A checkbox simply holds a true or a false value. True if it's checked, false if it's not, okay? Now, what I'm doing with some if is I'm saying, hey, this range right here, these checkboxes, I'm going to check these for a condition. So here's my range. Here's my condition. If it's true, then we're going to add stuff up. Now, I don't want to add the checkboxes. That doesn't make sense. So I have a sum range that corresponds. It's the same size. So both of these are rows 3 through 12 as this checkbox row or this checkbox column. So if the checkbox in row four is checked, I'm going to include that in the sum. And if it's not, I'm not. So watch this value 357. This will go down as I deselect some of these numbers and back up when I select them. Okay, now we've got the subtotal function. Now, this basically holds a bunch of functions inside of it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to pull up the documentation from Microsoft. What subtotal will do is it takes a function number is the first argument, and that corresponds to all of these right here. So these are the functions that the function subtotal holds. So if I select one, then it's going to average all of the numbers I give it. If I select two, it'll count them. And down here, if I select nine, for our purposes, it will sum them. Now we've got two options for nine. We've got just nine, and then we've got 109. Well, if I do just nine, it will include hidden rows. What does that mean? Let's go back here to Excel. Here's the function we're using, subtotal nine, B3 through B12. So we're summing up B3 through B12, and that's going to equal 582. Now, we're using nine, not 109, so it's going to include the hidden rows. So if I were to hide row six, which is 101, instead of going down, we're going to stay at the value, the sum, 582. And if I change this to 109, then you'll see that we're now at 481. We're not including that hidden row, okay? I'll add the row back in, and we'll go on to our next function, which is aggregate. Now, aggregate, here's the documentation, is sort of like a souped-up version of subtotal. As you can see, we now have 19 functions that it holds, including the standard ones, one through nine, that we just saw from subtotal. It's just got some more math-heavy functions, and then we've got options. So 
not only can we say ignore hidden rows, but we could also say ignore error values or hidden rows and error values or ignore nothing. So all of these things are different options on what to or to not ignore. So it's just a more complicated, more souped up version of subtotal. Sometimes it, in these uh, higher math functions, it will require not only one range of numbers, but two ranges of numbers for the arguments. Let's get over here into our simple example, though. We've got, just like we did with subtotal, aggregate 9. We're using 5, and 5 was the option to ignore hidden rows. And so that's going to do the same thing that we just saw happen. If we hide row 6, then our aggregate function does not include row 6's value. Okay, let's get more complicated still. VBA. If you do not have this developer tab up here, I want you to go to File, Options, Ribbon, Customize Ribbon, and then make sure that you can uh, find Developer over here and add it, as you see I've added it, so that it shows up. Under the Developer tab, you can select Visual Basic, or you could click Alt F11. And this opens up the Visual Basic Code Editor. What is Visual Basic? Well, it's basically the coding language built into all of Microsoft's Office's applications. So we can use this to do more complicated things that we couldn't already do with functions. In our case, it doesn't make sense. We're just exploring the theme of being able to use this because functions are actually faster to just add two numbers. Be that as it may, here is the function which we can grab the range right here B1 through B11, we can pop up a message box showing that the total of the ranges is this result, and then we can actually put that result into the range F9. I'm going to click Run right here, and you'll see, boom, we've got this pop-up box, and the total of the range is 557, and that value updated right here. All righty. Now let's go a little bit more complicated. So in order to use Python inside your spreadsheet, you type in equals PY tab, and now we've got the Python prompt. Now I just want to declare a variable numbers. I'm going to attach it to this built-in Excel function to grab this range, B3 through B12, and then I'm going to sum that up. If you click Control or you press Control Enter, it will display series. Okay, what is this? Well, if you click this little thing next to it, it'll show the card for the series. We can see we've got the answer right there, that 582. We could also display it as a string right here, but that's, that's kind of funky looking. Let's go up to the top of the formula bar here to the left side and click this little icon. We've got Python output, and now change it to Excel value, and you'll see it updates the value right there. Okay, we went from easy to complicated. Let's go back one more time to easy. You really only have to highlight some numbers to find the sum. So if I've highlighted these numbers right here, look down here in the bottom right. The bar down here, we've got average, count, max, sum. There are built-in values. You can right-click them, and you can control which ones to display right here. We can put the minimum. We can take the minimum and the max off. And, but we've got sum as one of those values. Hope this has been an eye-opening and helpful tutorial for you. Please click like and subscribe to my channel for more data and coding content like this. You're awesome. Thanks and goodbye.